Oh, awesome. So a lot, of, a lot of things happening today. Get your merch, jump in, go put something in the Flamingo, and uh, it's going to be fun. Well, today we're launching DNA, our DNA series, and today the title of the message, if you take your notes, is Mission Possible. Mission Possible. I also want to take a moment to honor really quick uh, the founding pastor of Mountain Park Church, Pastor Robin Wood is on the front row. Why don't you stand really quick? Uh, the founding pastor, and we're going to give honor where honor is due, and uh, thank you, Pastor, uh, for being here. He's going to be at another service, but he said, I'm going to slip in quick and uh, come to Mountain Park, and such an honor to have you with us, uh, Pastor. Um, so we're jumping in today, and, and that's just great. I know some of you had listened to DNA last year, and some of you have joined Mountain Park recently, and so you kind of, what, what's this place about? What is, our, what is our vision? What is our mission? And where are we going? What are we up to? And so today, my goal is to kind of talk a little bit about that about uh, the importance of vision and mission and, and, and what's your role uh, in that. Vision is so important. Why is vision so important? Because vision changes lives. Vision changes life. And when there's unity around a vision, the capacity increases. Think about people that have changed lives. I think of one of my heroes, because I grew up in this country, uh, President Nelson Mandela. He had a vision. He had a vision to what? To see freedom. Uh, in, in South Africa. He wanted to see uh, the abolishment of racism. And so he had this vision. But you know what? That vision came with a price because vision costs. Vision costs. It cost him 27 years in a prison cell. 27 years. I don't know if you've ever, if you're a reader, I encourage you to get some of his memoirs because there's letters that he would write to his daughter at Christmas and say, I'm so sorry that I cannot be home with you but I'm on this vision. There's a bigger plan at stake. Vision costs. I think about Mother Teresa that, you know, celebrities, anywhere from Bono to Prince Di Princess Diane, all celebrities wanted to spend time with her. But you know what her mission was? Her mission was to take care of the poor, the needing, the lepers of India. And it cost her life. It cost her everything. This is someone that could have written books and counseled multi-millionaires because they all wanted to spend time with her. But she gave her life to the poor. That was her vision, her mission. I think about Jesus Christ who, who came and he said, God, God sent me to, to pay a price for the sin of humanity. I came to serve and not be served. I came to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free. Jesus came and then we know the story that, that he gave his life on a cross, a brutal death. Why? Because his vision was to see you and me free. Vision is powerful, but vision so often requires a cost. You know, our vision here at Mountain Park Church is, is wonderful. It's what? To realize your role in God's story. That is so important. What is Mountain Park about? It's about you realizing your role in God's story. Why? Because when you give your life to Jesus Christ, that is the starting point. That's not the end. You are now starting your journey. And this is why Jesus said something so powerful. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they what? They follow me. Salvation is the starting point to say, God, why did you create me? Why am I here? What is my role in your kingdom? You see, I spoke this a couple of weeks ago. Doc, God took you out of the kingdom of darkness and put you into the kingdom of light, his kingdom. But guess what? His kingdom has a vision. It has an assignment. And you have a role in that assignment. You have a role in God's story. The question today is, will you step into your role in God's story? What's our mission? What are we calling as we come here to church, as we jump in groups, as we go through Alpha, as we, we go through training on how to shepherd and lead people, as, as we go out on the mission field and we do all these great things. What is, as you're, you're discovering your role, what is our mission? Our mission is what? To invite others to what? Realize their role in God's story. Why? Because there are so many people outside in, in our community at our Safeway or Fries or Trader Joe's or Sprouts or whatever you love, at, a, at your favorite coffee place, you know, whether it's in Infusion or Black Rock or Starbucks. <laughs> I met someone the other day who said, Pastor Charlton, McDonald's has the best coffee ever. I said, how do you even believe that? 
But all these places we go to, guess what? There are people out there that don't know that Jesus loves them, that Jesus gave his life for them, and that there's an abundant, overflowing life for them, that God has so much more for them. Well, we need to go out and what? Invite them to realize what? Their role in God's story. They have a role. They're, they're called to be his sons. They might be prodigals right now, living in the pig pen, but guess what? There's a palace that's calling them. There's a kingdom. There's a God who loves them so much. So our, mission, our vision is what? For you to realize your, your role. Our mission is what? To go out into the highways and the byways and to tell everybody, come on, you have a role. Come, we want to invite you. We have invite cards at both doors. I want to challenge you. Take two or three or four, however, and invite. You know what? All someone can say to you is, is this. No. But what if they said yes? Imagine what could happen if you just said to someone, hey, I want to invite you to come to church. You don't need to preach at them. You don't even pray for them. You just need to invite them. In fact, in Scripture, there's a great story where Jesus talks about a party. And he says, go out and invite everybody to this feast. You and I are called to invite people to church. You know, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You know what you, you know what Paul is saying in there? God has a role for you. He has works laid out for you. He's prepared it before. He wrote, he, he wrote your name. He wrote your story. He knit you in the womb. And he says, now, I have a purpose and a plan for you. It's realize your role in my story and begin to walk it out. There's so much more to life. Our mission, inviting others to realize their role in God's story, is taken out of the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. Let's read that. And then Jesus said to them, his disciples, you see, Jesus has died for our sins. He's, he, he rose on the third day that you and I could have new life, but now he's ascending to heaven. And he says to his disciples, he gets his team together, and he says, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of some nations, a few, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This morning, we got to see people getting baptized. Why is that so important? Because that is part of God's mission, the great commission, to see people water baptized. It says, go out and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teach them to obey everything I have commanded them. What does that mean? We should be making disciples who make disciples who make disciples. If you're a Christ follower today, well, pastor, I'm an introvert. It's okay. Guess what? You still have a role in God's story. You can't still invite somebody. You can't serve. Maybe, pastor, I could never get on the stage or I could never teach a class. Guess what? I couldn't do what I'm doing right now if there wasn't someone running a soundboard. If there wasn't someone running a camera, it's two of them in the back. If there wasn't someone up in the media booth putting up the scriptures, it takes a team. Everybody has a role. Now, I'm the guy maybe up front and maybe the worship team's up front, but their role, pushing faders, is just important as my role. It's just important. So I want to encourage you today. It doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or an introvert. You have a role in God's story. And our role is to baptize people, to share the good news, and to teach them. You, you see, you know, Jesus said this. No one takes a light and, on, and puts it under a basket. No, a light's to go on a hill, just like Jeremy up on South Mountain. He's on a hill speaking and praying and declaring God's word over our community. Why? Because if you and I don't declare God's word, you know what people are going to hear? Bad news. Come on, people are getting it from the news stations, people are getting it on social media, the economy's this, and there's no hope for your marriage. It's just negative, negative, negative. The world needs the words of life. The, words need, the world needs you and I to be a light. Who needs you today to be a light? Who in your neighborhood? Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's a colleague. Maybe it's the parents at your kid's school. Maybe it's the people at your gym as you're working out. Who needs you to be a light on a hill? 
Now, I want to quickly share with you this next year, what are some things that we're going after in this next year? Now, I'm going to tell you, and unapologetically, I am a visionary leader. My staff will tell you, it drives them absolutely crazy. Because I'm always throwing things on the wall. What if we did this? What if we did that? And they're like, you're crazy. But I know it takes crazy people to do unique things. But I also know that for some people, visionaries are dangerous because visionaries mean change and change is not easy, right? Come on, how many of you love change? Slip your, slip your hand up. Look at that, just a few. How many of you don't like change? You're just like, yeah. So change is not easy. And so today, I, I know a couple of weeks ago at Envision, I kind of shared a little bit about, hey, some high-level vision, some stuff I'm believing for in the next five years here at Mountain Park. And I know some people in our church got a, got a little nervous going, is he going to do that like next week or next month? No, I'm believing for that. I'm going to chase and believe God because my Bible says that with God, some things are possible. All things are possible. And I know that there are so many more people in this state, in this city, we don't have enough churches. We don't. Okay, let me tell you something. Are you okay if some people don't get to heaven? Are you okay with that? There's a few of you that aren't. Are you okay that some people are gonna miss heaven? We need to have hearts to reach everybody with the good news. Because guess what? Somebody went out of their way to reach you. Somebody went out their way to reach you. We have a city that needs Jesus. We have a country that needs Jesus. And we have a world that needs Jesus. So I want to narrow it down because some of you that are pastor, you're going too fast for us. I'm going to give you six things. In the next year, there are six things that we're going to build. We're still in building phase. There are six key areas in our church we're going to focus on. I want you praying. I want you believing. I want you sowing. And I want you serving in one of these six things. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. I'm going to go quick. Number one, kids ministry. Kids ministry. And uh, we have a brand new logo if you haven't seen it. We got, we're making space upstairs. We're going to do some great things downstairs. Uh, MP Kids, our website changed. Uh, so parents, we, we're getting better at things. And you might say to me, well, why? Why is kids first? Well, let me tell you something. Church consultants will tell you this. There's two ways. Number one, the top two reasons why churches don't grow. Number one, Parking. We don't have that problem. Whoever designed, Steve Bardusin and the team that designed this, praise God for them. We have a lot of parking. <laughs> praise the Lord. Number two, number two, kids ministry. Okay, let me tell you, parents, can I just talk to the parents really quick? If I am the most dynamic communicator and you just love my preaching, and hopefully you do in Jesus' name, but if our children's ministry is not great and your kids don't like it, are you gonna stay at this church? No. But if I was the worst communicator, and some of you are clapping, yeah, I don't. If I was the worst communicator, and our worship was terrible, but your kid was growing in Jesus and having a blast, would you stay? That's why we're gonna pour into our kids' ministry this year. And we need some of you to step up. We need some of you to serve. We need help. You know, in the last year, it's one of the areas in our church, where we have, we've seen the greatest growth, almost 80 more kids a weekend from a year ago. 80 more kids. We're growing in our kids' ministry. We're seeing our young families joining our church. We had 18 kids, 18 two-year-olds in the class. We normally average, that was three weeks ago, we normally average around about 67. We had 18 two-year-olds. I'm so glad I'm not in that ministry. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. But young families are coming and we want to reach more kids and we want the kids. The Bible says train them in the ways of the Lord so they won't depart them. Culture is after our kids and so we got to train them. We're going to make disciples. We're going to baptize them. I got to baptize Charlie today. Young kid is going to grow to be a mighty man of God. Because why? Because there's people in this church that are going to help him. You're going to help Charlie become that leader, that man of God. Number two, second area that we're focusing on is our youth ministry. Our youth ministry. Why? because the devil is after our teenagers in the high school. And we can stop and we can talk about the problems, but let's focus in on the solution. 
Let's focus in on our youth ministry. I want to encourage you. I'm going to challenge some of you. Come on. If you have a heart for teenagers, come on Sunday morning and lead a Bible study. Attend a service and serve at the second. Even just once a month, we'll take it. Sunday night, parents, Sunday night, we, we, we're planning events. The first one uh, is coming up, I believe, next Friday, our first Friday night uh, uh, youth event. Once a month, we're going to have an outreach youth event so that your friend, your kids, non-believing friends can come Sunday night, have fun, but hear the good news of Jesus and make a decision. But I need some of your parents, get your kids Get your middle school, high schooler, get them to church on Sunday night. Get their friends and let's see what God could do. So I'm challenging you parents. Sunday night, get them. Let's see what God would do through our youth. Third one is young adults. I'm so excited. Young adults, soft launch is coming the end of this month. And, uh, and then in September, we hit the ground running with a big event. And we're, we're going after young adults. We, we need to see more young adults here at Mountain Park Church. And so I wanna challenge you to serve and to be praying uh, for young adults. The soft launch is August 24th. The big event is September 7th. All this info is on our webpage. And so go check that out. Then an area. So Kids, we're going off to kids. We're, we're going off to the youth. We've got to reach the youth. We're going off to young adults. We're going to pray and cry out and serve and go after that. Number four, groups. I want to see you get into groups. We're not a church with groups. It's on the side. We're a church of groups. What does that mean? That means I want you to attend a service. I want you to attend a group or a class, and I want you to serve in one area. I believe as you, you attend a service consistently, I believe as you jump into a group and you do life with others because we are family, you're growing. You're not just being ministered to, you're ministering to others. You're growing in your faith. You're letting God use you, and then you're serving. And we have all kinds of groups. In fact, we have two, focus groups and community groups. Community groups are Bible studies. And in, in three weeks' time, we're going to launch our next 10-week series called The Good Life, based on Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Fruit of the Spirit. And it's going to be, the team has done a great job of writing the curriculum. We're so excited. I'm excited to preach this series. But how do you and I begin to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit grow in our life and flow out of our life to a world that is hurting? And we're going to talk a lot about that. And there's going to be Bible studies, men, women, couples, midweek. All these groups, we'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks. But then we have focus groups. Focus groups are really specific in certain areas. So we have grief share, we have hope, we have divorce care. And then we have this thing called alpha. Alpha is for those of you that are still wrestling with your faith and you have questions that are unanswered and who is Jesus, what does he have to say? In fact, let's take a look at this video talking about alpha. So the team is so excited. This will be our third. Pastor Jan and the team have worked so hard on Alpha. We're doing our third run through Alpha. And so if you have friends that don't know about Jesus, hey, get them to Alpha. You've got a colleague, you, you, don't, you need to get to Alpha. It's gonna lay the foundation of your faith. It's Sunday morning, second service, launches Sunday, uh, August the 20th. You can sign up on our website. And then this is, this is a ministry at our church that has been absolutely incredible. And there's some of you that I'm gonna challenge you to take this next step in your marriage. It's our Marriage Mondays ministry. In fact, we've got a quick video telling you about the next season and all the different areas in and Marriage Monday, all the different classes and breakouts. So let's take a look at the video with Greg and Pe Peggy LaMonica. Hello, Mountain Park. We are Greg and Peggy LaMonica, and we serve in Marriage Mondays. We know that great marriages don't happen by accident. In a few weeks, we will be kicking off the fall semester of Marriage Mondays. 
If you have been married longer than a week, you know that marriage takes work, patience, love, and a big dose of grace. That's true. And the good news is we offer classes for every stage of marriage, starting with premarital. Getting married is one of the most important choices we make in life. And after the excitement of the wedding is over, guess what? You're married. Our desire is to help you prepare for a marriage that will glorify God and one you will enjoy for a lifetime. Did you know there are 67 different combinations of blended families? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, 40% of families with children are involved or impacted by a step family. If this sounds like your situation, we offer the Smart Step Family. In this class, we follow leading expert Ron Deal as he reveals the seven fundamental steps to blended family success. Whether recently married or preparing to blend, you'll discover how to communicate effectively and solve the everyday puzzles of step family relationships. Our core marriage class is called Reengage. Reengage is designed to provide dedicated time to grow in your relationship with your spouse and with God. Each Monday, we dive into one of 14 topics such as communication, grace, conflict, forgiveness, expectations, spiritual intimacy, and more. This is open to all married couples. Vertical Marriage and How We Love are two classes designed to reinforce the principles couples learned in previous Marriage Monday classes and emphasize new ways to communicate and grow spiritually. And finally, if you can't make Monday nights, we have a weekend intensive for you. The Art of Marriage is open to all engaged or married couples. It will be held Friday night, September 22nd, and Saturday, September 23rd. Marriage the way God intended it to be is a true art form, and the Art of Marriage weaves together expert teachings, real life stories, and humorous vignettes to illustrate both the challenges and the beauty of God's design. We promise you'll find this class both enriching and fun. Child care is provided for all of our Marriage Monday classes at no additional charge, and registration is open now. Go to mountainpark.org slash marriage. We have a wonderful team of compassionate leader couples, and we look forward to seeing you at Marriage Monday. Wow. So come on, couples, I'm gonna encourage you. All the info is on our website, and uh, if you want a godly marriage, a better marriage, a stronger marriage, check out Marriage Monday. I believe it'll absolutely Take your marriage to the next level and what God has for you. So we've been talking about kids, youth, young adults, increasing more people getting into groups because that's where life happens. Number five, doing church as a team. Doing church as a team. You know something about Michael Jordan? Everybody's like, Michael's the goat. LeBron's the goat. Let me tell you something. If Michael Jordan didn't have Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman, he would have no rings. He would have no rings. Why? Because it took a team to win a championship. It takes a team, a church, a family to make a difference. You know I've said this before. We're not a cruise ship. We're a? We're a battleship. This ain't the love boat, baby. We're in a battle. The devil's off to souls. I read prayer cards about addiction. I read prayer cards about just people are struggling and hurting. There's a fight going on. Every one of us have to realize our role in God's story. And then the last one today, so kids, youth, young adults, join a group, doing church as a team. Today, you're gonna jump in. I'm challenging you, jump in. Find a role on the battleship. Let's see what God can do. You have a talent, you have something to bring. And then number six, the last thing, it's a new ministry. It's a ministry actually about a year ago presented to a bunch of men uh, and uh, and there was a little bit of pushback, to be honest. And I said, Lord, I'm going to just throw it on the shelf. I'm going to throw it on the shelf. A year later, one of those men came to me, said, Pastor Child, I want to step into leading this ministry at Mountain Park Church. This morning, I want to invite up and uh, welcome a leader you all know. I want to welcome up Joe Tracer. So what are you going to be up to, Joe? <laughs> um, so we, uh, um, you know, we talked about Celebrate Recovery. Um, and, you know, even when we did um, the last men's breakfast, we did a survey. And we, did, you know, we, you know, surveyed a bunch of different topics. And the, one of the largest concerns, uh, well, two concerns, there was uh, the youth difference. 
And so we're, I'm, I'm excited that we're pursuing that. Yeah. But then also was anxiety, mental health, and sleep. And, uh, you know, and it, and it reinforced, you know, that this ministry we've been talking about, Celebrate Recovery. Yes. So Celebrate Recovery, a wonderful over 20-year um, ministry that, um, you know, was birthed by one person um, out of Saddleback Church in California. <laughs> um, today, it's a very well-organized, um, you know, restoration ministry uh, today, 35,000 di 35, different churches have Celebrate Recovery. Um, Celebrate Recovery uh, creates that environment, you know, to, for people to feel safe, to walk in so they can work on what, what they focus on is hurts, hang-ups, and habits. And it's, uh, you know, it's that safe environment um, that people can walk into. So we've been saying, you know, we're gonna, we're not ready yet. We're not ready, uh, especially from, uh, you know, from, from even from the men's leadership and a lot of the men's leadership that have gone through the Hope Study, um, you know, and and the Hope Group, and been able to really do the twelve step study and really being able to really change, and really get rid of some of those hang ups and those habits and those hurts. But we were, we were holding off because we were waiting for a point person. Amen. And uh, so, but, but there's also, you know, a story. So if I can share that real quick. So, um, uh, so um, you know, bringing in a ministry like this really is, it's a heavy lift. You have to build a team. And then there's also very months of preparation. So there's, uh, you know, there's a, they have a very good structure. And so you have to really take your team through preparation. So it can easily take six to nine months to launch it. Um, so, um, so part of the story is, um, you know, I, I was on a journey to say, I need time off. I need, you know, I was doing a lot of evening studies. I was doing one-on-ones with some of the guys. And I needed time off. So for the rest of spring and then for the rest of summer, I, I, I didn't do any evening studies, any, any volunteering in the evenings and things like that. And just got to, to regroup and refresh. Yeah. So I was on this journey, and I was like, when I come back in the fall, what am I going to do when I come back in the fall? And um, so is it, you know, I've been in hope for 10 years, you know, do I, am I going to come back and do 10 more years of hope? Um, we, without a doubt, Jennifer and I are going to do um, Marriage Mondays, you know, because we, yeah. we love, we love that step study. Yeah. Um, a good study. So, you know, when, when we started, you know, on this journey, I'm just saying, what do I do? Now, there's a parallel story as I'm walking through my being refreshed. There's a parallel story happening. Um, okay, good emotions, good emotions. Amen. Love those, love those. Love those. That's love always, uh, Holy Spirit's talking. But, um, so we, we, in our family, we had this wonderful, young, beautiful, young adult lady who um, was sold out to the world. Um, you know, the, the world was going to give her everything she needed, the joy, the peace, the fun, the happiness. But then about nine months ago, she said... She said, no more. Amen. She said, it's time for change. It's time for change. So, but here at Mountain Park, there was, there's nothing for the ladies to come into. So, you know, we as a family, we said, let's get her to celebrate recovery somewhere, yeah. right? Um, so she did. It's good, Jeff. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. So um, they embraced her. Um, she did her 
um, she did her 30 day sobriety, she did her 60 day sobriety, did her 90 day sobriety. So let me try to fast forward, make this a little easier. So um, about five months, um, they said, hey, have you accepted Jesus? And she said, I'm ready. So, so and, and she did step forward, and she accepted Jesus. And, and that was on a Saturday. And then Sunday, um, Scott Williams was here, rocking the house like he always does. <laughs> and he says, hey, who wants to, you know, who's accepting Jesus? Raise your hand. And, of course, there she was. Amen. So, amen. So, um, so he, to fast forward then, and she, uh, uh, this young lady will be nine months in, in just a couple of weeks. Um, right? um, so, so then I come back to, okay, when I come back, you know, Charlton, I will, I will support, <laughs> celebrate recovery. <laughs> I will... When somebody steps forward, I, I am now a believer, I will step forward, and I will support yeah. it. But God wasn't happy with Amen. that. God Amen. said, no. He said, no, no, no. I want you to, to, to be the point person. But I was quick to quote Moses. <laughs> I, said, I said, Lord, wait. Send my brother. He's, he speaks better than me. <laughs> Yeah. It didn't work for Moses either. I mean, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love it. Right. Love it. Joe. Um, so, yeah. so now it's time. It is time to step forward. So, yeah. um, but we do have um, also an ask. You know, we need to ask, um, you know, just like Nehemiah. Nehemiah went to go rebuild the wall. Yeah. But, he, but he was by himself when he went to step mm -hmm. forward to go build the wall. Yeah. And um, so, it, and, but when he got there, mm. And he mentioned the vision. Amen. Then, then the people Amen. the people stepped forward and said, "We will help." Amen. Okay. So our ask to you, you know, there's people here that you know we they are hurting. Yeah. They do have hangups, yeah. and they do have um, habits, and we 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 need this, you know, here at our church. But we also need helpers. Amen. So um, I'm asking if anybody has gone through the CR um, study, the deep 12-step study. Um, you're, you know, you've completed that, Amen. and something is shaking on your heart at all. Um, we're, we we need help. We're going to need to build a team. Amen. But then also, if you've been through any other type of restoration study, the 12, any type yeah. of biblical 12-step or something like that. Yeah. So even hope, guys. Um, we need you to step forward. Uh, but then there's also going to be children's, you know, yeah. care and stuff like that. And there'll be yeah. some music worship and stuff like that. Good. So that's our ask. And, yeah. And so, um, but we're, and we're going to be planning for about the next six to seven months. Thank so we you. need some help. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. If you're interested today and uh, if you're interested in God's putting on your heart to know more, please see Joe. Uh, we have a Celebrate Recovery wall there. You can jump in and just ask, but our goal in the next couple of months is to build a team. And if you've never done CR, but you just want to help people, I believe this ministry is going to be huge for you to get involved. And I believe the harvest is great. The workers are few. The people are going to come in. Amen. We're going to kind of transition now into communion because without God, without Jesus, none of these things will grow. Amen. We need Jesus. I was thinking today... Uh, this morning is my devotions on John chapter 15. It's a beautiful, rich passage. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. When we give our lives to, G to Jesus, he grafts us into him. He's the vine, we're the branches. And he says, apart from me, you, you can do nothing. But then he goes a little deeper in verse 12 and 13, and he, he says, uh, my commandment is this. Not think about it. My commandment is this. Love each other as what? I have loved you. And then I think the next verse is so powerful. 
This is the measure of maturity, I believe, in the Christian faith. You wanna know if you're really up there and growing in God? Here's the litmus test for you in verse 13. And greater love has no one than this, than to what? To lay down one's life for one's friends. I believe true maturity as a Christ follower is when you lay your life down for others. When it's no longer about you, it's really about everybody else that doesn't know Jesus. As we get ready to partake in communion and I want to invite up the worship team, Jesus on the cross, you can go find this in uh, Luke chapter 23. I'm not gonna read the verses, but Jesus has been whipped with a cat of nine tail, his back exposed. The Bible says you couldn't recognize him as a man. He was so beaten up and beard ripped in blood. They nailed Jesus to a cross. And as he hung on the cross, you have to understand, as he, to breathe, he'd have to push himself up. <sighs> He's looking out and there's his mom, Mary, weeping as she's seen her son die on a cross. His friends are there weeping. He's physically exhausted and in pain. He knows he's about to take the sin, die for the sin of humanity. And he knows for a moment that his father in heaven, when, when Jesus was baptized, he, he, there was a voice that came, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But here on the cross in the midst of physical exhaustion and pain and the emotions before him, his mom, his friends weeping, he, he's there and he knows for a second that his father would have to turn and not look at him as the sin came upon him. He, Jesus was so close to his father. And in the midst of all of that, there's two guys on the side of him on the cross and they begin to cuss him out. They begin to say, come on, aren't you the savior? We've heard about you. But then one guy on the cross turns and he says, will you remember me today? And Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. You know, I thought about that for a second because even to his last breath, it was never about him. He had every reason on the cross to say, I'm exhausted, I'm in pain, and my body's in shock, my mom is crying, my friends are crying, my father has to turn and look away. Even in that moment, he could have said, you know what, I'm, that's it, I'm done. But even in that moment, he looked to the right and left and saw two men that needed salvation. And one of them made a decision. You see, Jesus laid his life down right to his last breath. I wanna challenge you, church. I wanna challenge myself. Let's lay our lives down for the least of them. There's so many people in your world that are hurting and broken. And without Jesus, they're not gonna make eternity. And so often we're making it, if we're honest, we're making it about ourselves and our opinions and our views and our theology. We're making it about all these things. And Jesus says, come on, will you make it about the least of these? And will you pay the price? And I'm not asking you to do something, Jesus is saying, that I didn't do. See, he never asked you to go get on a cross. He just asked you to pick up your cross and to follow him. And this morning as we do communion, I know we're running a little late. I know there's a lot to do. Jumping, there's a, there's a jumping card that's waiting for your name. But today, can we put our time aside and can we just make it about Jesus for a moment? Because communion is so powerful. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I want you to take a moment right now before, you, before we get into communion. I just want you to take 30 seconds. Is there anything today that you just need to say, God, would you forgive me? God, would you forgive me of my pride? 
Would you forgive me, God, of my selfishness? Would you forgive me, God, of my sin? Would you forgive me of my attitude? Would you forgive me for the, for the way that I look down on people? Would you forgive me? Is there anything right now before we partake of holy communion, holy communion, just take a moment and just, God, would you forgive me? Maybe you've been fighting with your wife. Maybe you said something to the kid. God, would you forgive me? Just tell him right now, would you forgive me? And then in verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says this, and I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was portrayed, he took the bread and we had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And, in the, and then in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. And whenever you drink it, it's a remembrance of me. And whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See, the bread is symbolic of his body that was broken for us. The juice is symbolic of his blood that was shed, that our sins could be removed as far as the east is from the west, that the old man could be laid down, that you and I could be new creations, children of the living God, children who now say, I'm remembering you, and I'm ready to follow you, and I'm ready to live out the great commission to a world. I'm willing to lay down my life as you laid down yours for me. God, would you help me? I'm gonna ask you again just to give us a couple extra minutes, but as we were getting ready for this day, I said, Lord, we're gonna close this service with an old hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Because I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of Jesus going to the cross for me. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. And so during this song as the team leads us, I'm gonna give you a moment to you and the Lord partake of communion. This is you and him. We're not doing a big family style today. This is you and the Lord as you feel led to say to him today, God, I wanna remember you and I wanna realize my role in your story and it's time for me to do something. I gotta get the good news out. And when we finish singing really quickly, I'm gonna pray and then I'm gonna challenge you to go out and find one area to jump in, to jump in on this team and let's see what God's gonna do. Amen? Come on, let's, let's worship Him.